of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, we already are trying now to move on onto this journey of the holy and great land. On the, we already started the second week. And today, in these readings, we have two beautiful readings. One from Isaiah, the prophecies of Isaiah, and one from Genesis. So the first one was the prophecies of Isaiah. Isaiah is addressing to the Judai people because they got to such a level that for them the sin became normal. And what was abnormal it was legal. Does this remind you of anything? Exactly. It's what we are living right now. All what was like 30 years, not long ago, right? 30 years was considered a shame, a sin. Today is normal. And if we do not accept those things, we are old fashioned. We are not normal. We don't understand them, you know, and so on and so forth. And this is what Isaiah is talking to to the people thousands of years ago. And he is preventing them, saying that the Lord is upset with you. And he is giving pretty much the same parable that Jesus is, is giving us through Matthew about the vine. He said, I planted a vine. I put a fence around it. I watered it. I prepared everything. And I was waiting for, for sweet fruits. And instead, I received bitter fruits and thorns. So what he was waiting for, for the fruits, for the good deeds that he is waiting for from us also, because he gave us the commandments. He gave us his son because he is mentioned that I planted the vine which will redeem Israel. So that vine is Jesus Christ. And we did not accept. Some of, some of them accepted, some not. The majority did not. And even those that accepted it, they failed. Look what is happening today. How many of our fellow Orthodox Christians baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, they are not practicing at all. We call ourselves Orthodox Christians. Are we truly Christians? I don't think so. So imagine, like for example, a doctor. He went to medical school, even graduated. But he never continued, he never practiced. practiced. And after several years, having the license, having the diploma, pretty much, doesn't necessarily mean that he knows what to do. Or an engineer, put an engineer after 20 or 30 years that he finished school. Maybe he will have some ideas, right? but definitely he's not going to be up to date. Because like, when you're prophesying, like you have to take some 
courses, some exams every year or every couple of months, something like that. So the same thing with those so-called Orthodox Christians that they are not practicing, so it doesn't make them Christians and definitely doesn't make them sons and daughters of God. And this is, this is what he wants us to understand and this is he, what he wanted the ancient Jewish to understand through prophet Isaiah. And when he's telling this, that what is going to happen, what, what, uh, what the master is going to do with that vineyard, because he, he wanted the sweet fruits, right? And he is giving the answer to them that is going to be chopped off and burned. So, and he is prophesizing there the destruction of Jerusalem. But he is binding in two different events, two different stories, and two different times. The first, the conqueror of the Judaic land by the Babylonian Empire, and second, by the Roman Empire, which will be the complete destruction. Yes, through the Babylonian Empire, they were subjugated for 70 years. And he said, he, he prophesied that they will be cleansed and renewed and restored. And they will return and rebuild the vineyard. And they will bring fruit. So we are seeing this coming back of, uh, of the nation and their spiritual race again. But by the time of the coming of Messiah, they were so confused again and departed from the truth of God that they could not recognize in him the Son of God. And they put him to death. And that was their death sentence also. Because pretty much they punished themselves. As we know that they cursed themselves, they also, through that cursing, and through their, through their decision, the choice that they made to put the Son of God to death, they put the entire nation to death. But he's saying, listen to Israel, whom he is calling Israel. In, uh, in that specific case, Israel is everyone who embrace, embraces the word of God, who embraces the truth of God. So he's not to talking about the Jewish but he's talking about all of those Gentiles that will see the light and will embrace the light and become sons and daughters of light. This is what he's talking about. And now we have to understand and we have to differentiate it and to see in which side are we standing today. Because we see so many attacks in his face and towards his church and towards his servants. It's not only against God, but also against anyone who will embrace his word, who will embrace his truth, who will embrace his church, automatically becomes an enemy of the Antichrist, of the evil one. And he said, he addre addressing to his disciples, he said and told them, prevented them, that they will hate you for my name's sake. 
but do not be sorrowful because I am with you. So we're not alone on this journey. He is with us. And through, through persecution, through temptations, through difficulties, we're actually growing up spiritually. We're getting, getting cleansed up as the metal does through fire. Become shiner, become stronger, that can be used for uh, different purposes that we need the metal. So the, the same thing with our soul becomes stronger with every temptation, with every difficulty, with every problem that attacks us. So we shall not be scared, but we shall stand straight. Stand up for this truth and not, not be scared of anything. And then when we are behaving and when we are listening and we're obeying to his commandments, then we will see our spiritual restoration. As we are seeing in the second re reading from Genesis, is talking about the first creation, about Adam and Eve and their fall. And specifically, after the sin already had happened, he's showing us his love and care. So before he cast them out, he made for them Cloth, leather, clothes, clothing, and he dressed them. So he did not cast them out because he knew that he, if they will be cast out from the grace of God, there, there is a lot of danger. There is cold, there is heat, there is... So, and even in this situation, after they pretty much, Adam accused him, in a way, instead of repenting, we don't know what would happen if, they, if he would actually repent. Right? But instead of repenting, he blamed Eve, but mostly he blamed God because he said, the woman you gave me made me eat. Right? So pretty much it's your fault because you created her. So, and uh, instead of actually taking responsibility for his actions, maybe, and I'm pretty sure, because he's the loving God, I'm pretty sure that if they would ask for forgiveness, they will recognize their sinfulness, he will, as a loving God, he will forgive them, because remember, how many attributes do we assign to God? Loving, powerful, all-knowing, almighty, and so many, right? When we are saying these things, what, what we are claiming, we're claiming a God when we are saying that he's almighty, all-knowing, so then he knows in secret what we are doing, right? He can stop everything, he can turn everything, he can make everything the way he wants, but no, we, because we have this corrupted mind, and we do not want to recognize our self, our sinfulness. That, oh, I didn't do anything. I didn't sin. I'm actually a good person. You know, I'm okay. It's like we never recognize how slothful and how sinful we are. And so many other things that we cannot hear. But the thing is, that we have to recognize, especially this period of time, is the period of repentance. And if we do not repent, look what happened to them. And that's, that's the reason pretty much they were cast out. Because again, 
he's showing us his love. Because if he will allow them in that situation to stay there, first of all, it would not be the same. Secondly, the evil one tempted them also to eat from the other tree. The tree of life eternal. So now imagine if they would eat from that also to live eternally like this. But he gave us a chance. He took them out, gave the possibility to repent, to die, and to raise, and to live a clean life. Through the resurrection, through repentance, we can resurrection and restoration of our ancient beauty in what we were created. So he did not want to punish us forever, for eternity, to live like this. Because we weren't made like this to suffer, to have different illnesses, hatreds, right? The first two sons of Adam and Eve, what happened? They both brought sacrifice. Cain brought from the first seeds that he had, but he took the, the, the best for himself, and the ones that were, weren't good, he gave them to God. So, well, what I don't like, I give it to God. So and many of us actually are doing that thing, you know, so, oh, if the oil is a little bit spoiled, okay, we'll give it to the church for the candles, for the lamps. And see, we should give the best to God, not the worst to God. That, that was the reason he denied his sacrifice, because he did from his worst fruits, from the worst crops that he received. The other one gave the best animals as a sacrifice to God, and God was pleased with his choice, with his decision. But now Cain became mad and angry, and God is telling, why are you angry? Do not let the sin is knocking on your door. Shut it down. And he did not. And led him to kill his brother. So you see, when we are not realizing, when we're not stopping right away, we're watering the sin and we're letting it grow and becomes a beast that kills us both physically and spiritually. This is what it happens. That's why he wants us to be always awake, to realize and to make these decisions, to put it on the balance, to use our discernment and to make the right decision. That's, that's the reason. So this is the teaching that we are getting from today's readings. So let us try, my dear ones, always to be spiritually awake with our spiritual eyes, with our spiritual ears. Let us, our spiritual mind, always to make this discernment and to make the right decision, to embrace his truth and to follow his truth. Amen. God bless you all.